Power networks have historically been designed with forward flow power in mind. In other words, from the power station to the customer. However, there is a growing trend around South Africa for customers to install small generators such as photovoltaic or PV systems on their properties. These generators are typically connected to the grid behind the meter, making them embedded and less than one megawatt making them small. Hence the term small scale embedded generation or SSEG. As of the middle of 2020, it is estimated that there were tens of thousands of such small systems in place amongst municipal distributors, totaling at least 400 megawatts and these numbers are growing steadily. The increasing presence of SCCG on networks is a reality that all municipal distributors have to adjust to. It's inevitable. You cannot really avoid it. It's going to happen either way. So cities have to be innovative. They have to find ways of working with that, you know, because that is the future, really. So you could see that uh, the solar uh, applications from the city of Johannesburg's perspective are increasing. Actually, it is doubling every year. Many customers with SSEG systems will at times generate more than they consume. For example, residential SSEG customers with solar PV generation may use little electricity during the middle of the day when the PV is generating at its peak output, making excess power available for export. This export power should be accepted by municipal distributors as it can benefit both the customer and the municipality, provided that sensible SSEG tariffs are in place. Before, I think a couple of years ago, there was that notion that SSEG is taking up you know, the, the revenues for municipalities. But I think as uh, time went, municipalities started to understand that this could be a new revenue stream, alternative revenue for municipalities, and this could be a win-win for customers and municipalities as well. In terms of customers being able to even sell back the excess that they have from their SSEGs, and for municipalities to be able to you know, uh, supply other customers using the excess generation as well. To accept exported power, meters which can record forward and reverse power flow are necessary, called bidirectional meters. Bidirectional meters may be single phase or three phase. They are mostly four quadrant meters, able to measure both active and reactive power for import and export of energy. Although for small customers, such as residences, reactive power registers are usually ignored. Many such meters are available in South Africa and there is a growing body of experience amongst municipal distributors with bidirectional meters. In this video, we will cover 1. Options for bidirectional meters 2. Billing integration considerations and 3. Bidirectional meter procurement guidance the, the, the implementation of SSCG results in power flowing in two directions. Uh, you will have your import and your export, and as such, one needs to have an appropriate metering system that will be bi bidirectional. That is a necessity for SSCG uh, implementation. Broadly, a municipality could consider the following options. A simple, single or three-phase bidirectional meter. This would not be smart, have no communication ability, require manual reading, require a site visit to change any of the tariff registers, and will be relatively cheap. 2. A prepayment option for the above meter with tariffs, including export credits loaded onto the meter. 3. Single or three-phase bidirectional meters that have remote reading functionality. And 4 single or three-phase bidirectional meters that has a two-way communication capabilities, also referred to as smart metering. These are more expensive, but will allow remote reading and configuration changes when smart metering, or 
Advanced Metering Infrastructure, better known as AMI, is installed. A meter on its own can sit alone there. It will just gather information. And that is a dumb meter. But the moment you enable the smart features of the meter, you need communication. And this means you need to have a communicating device or communication equipment linked to your meter. So you have a meter as a key component. You have the most important part, communication equipment, and you also have a back-end system. And in the back-end system, that is where the intelligence will run. That is where you do your billing. That is where you interpret information from the meter because whatever the meter does, it gives you the raw data on request. But the backend system will apply the intelligence to make sense of the data that it receives from the meter. So the whole chain of communication makes the smart meter concept um, a metering that is intelligent. So with the smart meter, they are able to communicate remotely and are able to check whether the meter is faulty or not. So there's no need to send out technician to site unnecessary. The smart meter will be able to do that for, for, for city power. So it's to work efficiently and to drive the, the smart city. It makes sense for a municipality to have a range of meter options to match the needs and budget of different customers. With simpler and cheaper ones for small SSG customers and smarter, more expensive ones for larger customers. Although this video is not covering Smart Metering Systems, or AMI, in any detail, it is worth noting that such systems have many potential benefits, like remote configuration capabilities, load management, and many others. When procuring bidirectional meters, it is important to consider compatibility with Smart Metering Systems. Municipalities also need to keep in mind that bidirectional metering will need to integrate with their billing system if it is to be of any use. Municipal distributors should engage with their billing software service providers to ensure the necessary compatibility does exist. So one will need to look at the physical equipment that is the meter itself. Is it able to meter both the import and the export and that is where the bidirectional naming comes from and at the same time the questions that must come after that is if our billing structure will it be able to bill for bi-directional or both the import and the export municipalities that are wanting bi-directional meters which have ami integration capabilities are advised to reference the nrs 049 smart metering specification this specification provides standards for different aspects of a smart metering or AMI system. Importantly, it includes procurement guidance which also prevents vendor locking. Great, so in this video we have discussed 1. What a bidirectional meter is 2. Four different options of bidirectional meters 3. Billing and smart metering integration and four, how the NRS 049 document could assist with the procurement of bidirectional meters. If you would like further support or information, you can explore the following options. Look on our website www.ssg.org.za. There are free online training resources at www.training.ssg.org.za. You will need to create an account, but this also comes free. We also offer periodic online or face-to-face -face training courses. Please email support at sseg.org.za to be kept informed.